Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 3 Legendary Edition where it's been a while. I apologize <laughs> again as you can see uh, maybe a little bit. <clears throat> I'm still somewhat recovering from the plague that I had for about two weeks and it wasn't COVID and it wasn't the flu. It was whatever nasty colds going around that makes you cough up a lung <laughs> and so when I was, tra I was traveling for about a week, you know, for Christmas stuff, and then I get, you know, get to my parents' house, and after visiting friends, and, like, the Christmas night, I, I was feeling great. My whole family's been sick. They've been, like, deathly ill. And then I was like, no, I'm good. I have a high constitution score. I almost never get sick. And <laughs> unfortunately, I rolled poorly <laughs> Christmas night. I was like, mm, my throat hurts. Uh, give me... One sec, I know we just acquired a new friend. Oh, I should definitely go talk to, um, where is she? Is she in the comment? No, she's in the crew deck. I need to go talk to Liara. We should probably talk to everybody, see if they have anything to say about our new, our new friend. But Liara doesn't wander as far as I know, so we should be able to get in here. Oh my gosh, let me just let me just be, remind myself about this buff mod I got that I'm so excited for. I don't feel like I'm just a noodle. A new notification is available on the private messages terminal. Not that, this one. Let me just read your mail. Oh yeah, so she takes like extensive notes. The things this Prothean must have seen, if they had the technology to preserve someone for over 50,000 years, no wonder they were capable of building things like the device on Mars. I must give him time to get his bearings, but goddess, when will we get another chance to learn so much about their civilization? <coughs> oh, I apologize. I'm hoping to edit those out. But I'm also recording this. Oh, I don't know if I said, but Happy New Year. I hope everyone had a good New Year. Better than mine. <laughs> a good New Year anyway. And that you got cool stuff on Christmas if, if you celebrate Christmas. Or Hanukkah. I also did a little Hanukkah celebration this year with some people. So that was really nice. Um, but yeah. Ha happy Holidays and New Year. I hope everyone's doing well. It's good to be back. I'm sorry things got hectic and I didn't, I definitely didn't want to go like three weeks without uploading a video, but such is the way of things. I couldn't even talk for like two weeks. So, unfortunately those plans got waylaid, but it seems like every year around Christmas time I go like almost a month without uploading, so happy holidays I guess? I don't know, anyway. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm glad to be back. I hope there's still people hanging out and watching these videos because uh, it's fun to get back and get started in the new year and get uploading more stuff. And a Baldur's Gate 3 comes out this year, I think. So that'll be exciting. I'm definitely playing that. But definitely want to finish up the stuff I've got going right now. So anyway, this isn't an announcement video. I'm just going to talk to you right now. <laughs> a Prothean. A living, breathing I she had a cut scene. right below me. He's not what I expected. Me neither. He was a little cold when I tried to talk. I understand the shock of waking up again. His species gone. But a Prothean Shepherd. There's so much it could tell us. Yeah, well, it's not gonna work out that way. I thought, uh, I, I thought there was like a scene where she gets upset, but that must just have happened in the previous cutscene. Let's see. Map. Garrus is still in the main battery. People aren't wandering yet, it looks like. I need to acquire Tally. I'm also I'm just really scatterbrained. I'm still trying to kind of get my bearings on things. I've seen a lot of crazy things in my time on the Normandy Shepherd. A talking Reaper, a talking Clan, yeah. and now a real live talking Prothean. Hell of a thing. Waking up to find everything you know is destroyed. But I imagine the chance to get some payback is consolation. I doubt you and I will ever get a second chance against the Reapers. Yeah, buddy. No, I'm not seeing that happening for us. I don't know, though. With some of the rumors people are talking about with the new Mass Effect, I really hope we don't go back to the Milky Way. I'll be very peeved if we do. Like, let Shepard rest, especially if we go back to Shepard. Like, I don't. Shepard's story's done. I just, I want to explore new things, new options in the Mass Effect universe. I love Shepard more than I can say, but she's done. I'm done playing Shepard, and I don't want to keep beating a dead horse, you know? Like, they're like, we got to get money. It feels like a cash grab if they try to make us play as Shepard again. Like, 
besides, I don't know how you would resolve the ending of Mass Effect 3 in any way that anybody would be satisfied, you know? Hello, Commander. So, anyway. I don't want to get into that, but I will be very upset. <laughs> be very upset. I don't know if it would be even worth playing to try to, like, I don't know, retcon stuff, you know? I don't know. Anyway. This is, that's, this is... This is not that. This is the glorious Mass Effect 3. See, does she say anything? Have you seen our newest crew member? You mean the biggest story in 50,000 years that I can in no way talk about? Say, yeah, I've seen him. Just wondering. I don't think she has anything else. You know, in the old days, they didn't have automatic cameras. Reporters had to cake on the makeup. I feel like automat like a, di a digital one would look creepy like very uncanny like already like a lot of the ai stuff just looks uncanny and weird i don't like any of it like you can tell like you can tell like especially like ai art and stuff like that like art i say in air quotes it's just like you can tell immediately that it's just ripped off you know do i oh do i want to do any of these I don't know how much money I have. Oh, I have so much money. No, I'm saving up for armor. No, I should I should upgrade a little bit. I think I'm using the shuriken. Um, I don't even know what I'm using. I don't like this. I don't like. I don't like this upgrade system very much. Well, I don't want an assault rifle, but I just want to look. The particle rifle. Maybe I should upgrade the particle. No, oh, please. No, no, no. I should upgrade the particle rifle. Somebody I've got has got that. The katana and the predator. Alright. I don't care. Commander, I feel terrible about leaving you on Grissom Academy like that. I did order you to leave. Yeah. Doesn't make me feel any better. I'm just glad it all worked out. Woohoo! I still can't believe it. A real live Prothean. <laughs> Doc must be over the moon. He could say that. I hear the guy's not all there. Exactly. Damn. <laughs> I can't imagine. Brought forward 50,000 years. Last of your kind. That's bound to screw with your mind. Yeah. Well, here's hoping he can help us with the Reapers. <laughs> Shepard, yeah. <laughs> Understatement of the year. talk with everybody on the bridge. I don't have any fish yet, right? I can die. Those poor colonists on Eden Prime. First the Geth attack, now Cerberus. For what it's worth, our new crew member doesn't need a translator himself, but he shared a Prothean language tutorial program. It was apparently designed for servant races being inducted into the Empire. Charming cultural clue. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting that he had one. I wonder if I, sh I should talk. I don't think the Primarch says anything about it. He's not really a crew member. He's just waiting for the meeting to go down. So a Prothean? A real live Prothean? Has Liara stopped bouncing yet? I'm guessing there may have been some bouncing. Some bouncing. How's our new visitor adjusting to the ship, Edie? He appears not to understand the human custom of separate sex restroom facilities. I am attempting to enlighten him. I will update you if there is positive progress. <laughs> um, how about you just update me if he doesn't get the message? <laughs> Very well. If he doesn't get the message. Perfect. All right, let's go do something. We just did a DLC. Now I'm going to hopefully edit this out and figure out what else I want to go get. <clears throat> You know, I hope I'm not like jumping the gun too much, but I really feel like it's about time to do the Priority Sarkash mission. So, hopefully I haven't taken too much time rambling in the first ten odd minutes of the video. Uh, 
I just wanted to make sure we got the reactions to everybody. Like, it's not cutscenes, but, you know, it's stuff. It's things to say. Meet with the diplomats. Let's go! And this video is in 4K! Oh my god, the <laughs> I only recorded the last- not 4K, sorry, whoa. It's in 4K capable, <laughs> but, um... But... Is there anything to get in this place? But it's 1080p, 60 frames per second. Heck yeah. Sir Kesh. The Solarian homeworld. It's been likened to the jungles of Earth. Pretty look at, teeming with life. Uncomfortable to live in and dangerous to the unwary. It's only uncomfortable if you don't know how to live there. <clears throat> The technophilic Solarians had significant pollution and waste problems early in the development of their society. They also embraced social solutions just as quickly, and through complex breeding rules, Sirkesh now maintains a crowded but sustainable population. The planet tends to be wetter than Earth, and Solarian cities spare no expense to collect and provide fresh water, as one might expect from an amphibious species. Due to Sirkesh's location in the galaxy far from dark space, it has yet to be invaded by the Reapers, but its rulers are all too aware that they are on the path of attack because they could not strike the first blow. As their military doctrine suggests, many consider their forces at a severe disadvantage. Yeah, they're already- the pol the politics, like, they already mentioned that, that that would be their- their reaction somewhat to the situation. Ta-da, I just read all the planets. Onwards. I have to read them all, for knowledge. The diplomatic ships of the Solarians, Turians, and Krogan float far away from one another, out of weapon range. Messages sent by each faction indicate they would welcome the Normandy- <coughs> okay. They would welcome the Normandy as a neutral meeting point for their diplomats. The fact that they have not agreed on a ship to serve as a neutral meeting point before now does not bode well for the negotiations. It doesn't. Yay! I'm trying to get this video out today, so I don't know. I'm just trying to go- Try to be fast. The Salarian Dalatras and Krogan clan chief are ready to come aboard. Have them brought to the conference room. It's gonna be a nightmare. And hope this doesn't start another war. The Krogan is in no position to make demands. The Krogan has a name. Rex! Not Rex. <laughs> and I'm not just some junkyard Varen. You unleash whenever you're in trouble. I've got my own problems. Reaper scouts have arrived on Tuchunka. So why should I care if a few Turians go extinct? Trying to draw out negotiations will get you nowhere, Rex. I have no time for it. Just tell us what you want. I'll tell you what I need. A cure for the genophage. Absolutely not. The genophage is non-negotiable. Yay, it's Rex! Woohoo! It figures it'd be Rex, right? As the Krogan representative. This Dalatras, though, is a piece of work. My goodness. And also, I think they're going to bring it up, but it's like, obviously, I am going to be biased as Shepard to Rex, because he was my crewmate, you know? So, it's like, well, yeah, you don't have much ground to stand on, Solarian. <laughs> Why are you so opposed to the idea, Dalatras? Because my people uplifted the Krogan. We know them best. You mean you used us to fight a war you couldn't win? It wasn't the Salarians or the Asari or even the Turians that stopped the Rachni. It was Krogan blood that turned the tide. And after that, you ceased to be useful. The genophage was the only way to keep your urges in check. Yeah, I don't see Delatrash this going well. I not like him, but Rex is right. Insulting him won't change that. I won't apologize for speaking the truth. Every a hole excuse. We Krogan to do one thing: wage war. It's all they know because it's all we wanted them to know. And this is just wild. It's like, it's like everything she's saying. It's like you cease to be useful. It's like a species isn't just their purpose isn't just to be useful to you. You know what I mean? Like they're their own sentient species with like a culture and everything, but you can see that they that she specifically considers them more animal than anything else, you know? And it's like it's not even like with um Morden's idea of the genophage where it was like he wanted it to he he wanted the genophage to be used to like make sure that the, that the Krogans wouldn't be like driven extinct because they are a valuable cultural like you know they have their own like just cultural 
stuff. Like they're their own species with their own value, like in, intrinsic value, without needing to be like a weapon. You know. Your people should have thought the matter through. Then was it really a surprise that Krogan revolted? That's precisely my point, Commander. We made a rash decision. We turned to the Krogan in desperation. It's the same they, mistake you're about to make. They today. should be heroes. No good can come from curing the genocide. But to be fair, after that, the Krogan really did push the boundaries. Like, it's not like the Krogan were, like, innocent babies and all of this. Like, they did take over. They started taking over planets that were already claimed by other species. And, like, started overrunning them. And, like, really pushing. And, like, not being good neighbors, essentially. <laughs> and so, like, yeah, you know. But the past is a past, you know? Like, you gotta learn from it and move on. The Krogan have paid for their mistakes. The genophage has gone on long enough. 1,476 years, if you're keeping track. It was a thousand years of peace, free from these brutes. Enough! Whether or not they deserve a cure is academic. It would take years to formulate one. My information says otherwise. Move. <laughs> A Salarian scientist, Malin, grew a conscience. He was on my planet, testing a cure on our females. I remember. His methods were barbaric. But what you didn't know is that other females survived his experiments. So the Dalatress here sent in a team to clean up the whole mess and to take them prisoner. Where did you get this? It could be a fabric. Uh-huh. Don't insult me. Those are my people. They're immune to the genophage, and you're going to give them back. Dalatras, is this true? Well, will curing the genophage benefit my people? You're going to do the same thing you did last time, where you bring the Krogan up <laughs> to fight an enemy you can't beat, except this time the aftermath is going to go differently. How long do you think you'll last alone against the Reapers? Because if you don't help, that's how it'll end up. And I'll be the last friendly Turian you ever see. What's it gonna be? <laughs> What's it gonna be? The females are being kept at one of our STG bases on Sirkesh. But I warn you, Commander. The consequences of this will be felt for centuries to come. Let's go get them. You're not setting foot on Sirkesh. This will take time. It happens now. Mm. As a council specter, Shepard can oversee the exchange. We're going. You can't just keep people who are totally I innocent. This, Commander, a bully has few friends when he needs them most. I could have been more bully, but I didn't. I was less bully than I could have been. <laughs> Let's go. I'm excited. We're going to bring Javik for Javik. Oh, I'm going to this is it's going to be an issue. Um, oh, do I actually, ooh, uh, because uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to meet, we're going to meet Morden going down. Um, so was, I'm, I'm, oh no, Liara didn't meet Morden actually, the only one who did was Garrus, this is actually perfect. There's not always background dialogue, but when there is, you know, it's nice. Uh, no, 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 no. You can have the particle rifle. The damage is low because it's, I think it's a beam, if I remember correctly. Predator. Is the shuriken the SMG? Oh, I can't look it for him. Okay, that's fine. Oh, I need to upgrade Garrus's. My goodness. The Avenger. Do we want? No, uh, the Avenger's fine. And the viper. Oh shoot! What do I want down here? Increase shotgun damage, power damage, and duration. Yeah, let's do the power one. My shotgun's already pretty, pretty beefy. I'm pretty happy with it. I maybe should have done something else, but I was, I was so close. <laughs> Proximity mine. I don't know how useful proximity mine is, honestly. Save. Oh my. Oh, holy. 
Uh, plague an opponent with persistent damaging biotic fields. So it's like, um... Oh, the Neuron one from the previous game. Oh. Interesting. Vengeful Ancient. Let's, let's get at least the basics on this. Definitely the basics on this. Lift Grenade sounds legit. As long as it doesn't require like a physical grenade and it's like a power, that's fine. Oh, Slam. Do I have anybody that has that? Like, besides him? I think it just, yeah, it just pulls people in, right? This one might be a good one to have impact radius. Incapacitate slam target. I do want to look at this though. Increase the power because the longer it is, the more it'll like the more damage it'll do to other targets as well. And slowing the target would be nice too. Perfect. Let's go to Sir Kesh, baby. I'm excited. Stuff happens on Sir Kesh. Happens with a capital H. God, look how beautiful it is. Look how beautiful I am, too. This is the Solarian homeworld we're headed to. They aren't used to seeing Krogan here, so let's keep it simple. We land, get the females, and leave before anyone changes their mind. I still don't trust a word they say. If they start backtracking, the angry Krogan act couldn't hurt. Who said anything about acting? He's mad at me. Just try to keep it verbal. Are you going to lecture me on restraint, Shepard? Yeah. What are you talking about? I found out you had access to Malin's data and destroyed it. Careful, Rex. Shepard's helping you now. Is she? These females are my people's best and last hope of curing the genophage. Whose side are you on, Shepard? This is actually, I think I've mentioned it before probably several times, but like one of the reasons I really like that you have the same character going through Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3 is that you can make changes. And like you as a person, as a player, can change as a person as these games come out and as you've played them. And like new and incoming data, even within the game or within, you know, your real world that you bring in into the game or whatever, can change your mind. And I really, one of the, the key factors on my Shepard when I initially played, like blind playthrough, just playing through, like, just like totally, just, you know, first time and like in interacting with the information I was given um, and forming my opinions on it <clears throat> without like reading online stuff or anything. Um, I honestly felt really bad at this point and I was like and I had already kind of been like kind of regretting the decision to like destroy the genophage because at the time they made like they keep making really good arguments for keeping the genophage but like as time went on and as like you know you get new information especially in Mass Effect 3 it's like you know what this isn't fair to the Krogan like I get that they did stuff like they, 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 they did they did bad things after they were uh, uplifted for the Rachni but like this is just it's inhumane to use like a human term I guess you know so for my shepherd anyway this was a, this was a thing where like she had come to regret this decision and like was now like she was never like yeah general phage but she did feel it was a necessary evil and now at this point the world is ending like the galaxy's ending things are going down and that changes the perspective for a person you know and after everything she's seen all the destruction she's seen at this point she's just like no like this is one thing we can fix right now maybe before the end of the galaxy but it's something we can fix and so for me that was an important turning point in my head in my head canon for her Destroying the data was a mistake. Yes, see? This war has shown me every species has a right to thrive. I want to believe that. I want to believe what you said to the Dalatress was real. We'll see how things shake out. Commander, I have the Solarian... He's mad. He's sensors. understandably mad. Set her down. Come on, Rex. We'll sort this out later. I do love the designs they went with. Very, um, Central American 
sort of Mayan Aztec. Commander, Solarian ground control says we don't have clearance. Shut up! I'm a. Tell them the Dalatras authorized this herself. I knew they'd never keep their word. Let's see them try to stop a Krogan airdrop. Rex. <laughs> Rex. We have an unauthorized landing. And who authorized you to hold my race hostage? What are, yeah, what are they trying to do with their little tiny... Something worth dying for. This matter can be resolved, but I must insist he remain under guard. <sighs> I can handle this, Rex. If anything goes wrong, and all bets are off. I mean, he could get far, but I don't think he could get all the way through. You know? I'm Paddock Wicks, and I appreciate your understanding, Commander. With war on everyone's minds, our people are on edge. <gasps> More experiments. Careful. Watch the containment shield. Brings back memories. They were much smaller in my cycle. <laughs> As you can see, this base contains sensitive information. It does. They're uh, doing experiments on uplifting a more species, another aggressive Krogan-like species. It's just hilarious. The, the Dalatras is up there going on and on about, oh, well, we gotta change. We can't make the same mistakes of the past. And then they've got this going. What kind of work goes on here? Evolutionary trials. Morphological simulations, exogenetic assessments. Nothing is ever simple with Solarians, is it? Science has always been our best defense. The research we do here has kept Sirkesh safe for millennia. Does that include studying lost Krogan? The females were in poor health when we found them on Tachanka. They were brought here to stabilize their condition. This old planet smells... <laughs> such a grump. I'd like to see He's them. such a grump. Of course, I'll need to clear you for the lower levels. Give me a few moments and meet me near the elevator. I'm quite fond of Paddock Wicks. <sighs> okay, yes. This is Sir Cash. Welcome. Notice the architecture. It's super cool. I really like And it's very, like, the jungle. I, I think I actually vaguely recall going off on this in the original Mass Effect 3 video that I did. But it's just, like, it's very, like, very, very Mayan. Very Aztec temple design, which makes sense for, like, very, like, a mountainous sort of, um like jungle zone and they've definitely like carved it out it takes a lot of work to put this stuff in here but like it it makes sense and i like that they use the previous design but definitely like modernized it you know so it's just really cool i really like it i've i've learned a lot more about like mayan and aztec civilization wow since like seven years ago not as much as i would like but definitely more than i used to know um Anyway, I am actually going to call this video here. I know we just got here, but there's definitely people down there that I'm excited to meet. There's several. There's actually a few people, at least, that we're going to get to see that we know. Um, <coughs> Paddock Wicks, excuse me, I'm sorry. Paddock Wicks, I'm pretty sure Paddock Wicks, anyway, is the one that you will replace Morden if Morden didn't make it through your Mass Effect 2 playthrough, because Morden is the easiest person that to die in Mass Effect 2. Um, fortunately, this time, Morden made it, and uh, we'll be able to have him with us, but Paddock Wicks is an exceptional character, and as much as I love Morden, when I re someday when I replay all this again, the legendary i will have paddock wicks come with me because he was very similar but very very uh, on the opposite side of the spectrum from morden of like his like how he perceives um like sort of like science and religion and stuff and it was just really fascinating he's an excellent character so um anyway thank you all so much for joining me i appreciate it hopefully i can get this video out today i'm excited for you guys to see it for the new year <laughs> so thank you guys again for watching i really appreciate it and let me give an extra special shout out to my patrons who have been incredibly patient and who i haven't updated on patreon even though oh i was gonna do that today i was gonna do that so we're still good hopefully i can get an, an update out for you today just on where i've been and where i'm going and stuff like that but i appreciate you guys so much for putting up with me and still being willing to like just throw me a couple bucks a month it's it's been it's been very helpful it helps me upgrade my setup and like make sure i have the gear to like um 
transport. Like that's been a big thing lately is getting new gear to help me transport my old gear <laughs> around the country. So thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. And for you putting up with the break in videos too. I appreciate it a lot. So really quick, I want to say thank you to Reese Galito. My sapling chair patron, thank you so, so much for your support. I very much appreciate it. And it's been nice seeing you in the Discord as well. Um, and an extra, extra special shout out to Christopher, my tree tier patron, who has been a constant joy and just a wonderful person who comments on videos and who I feel like I just, I owe you a lot. And you're just really nice and I really appreciate it. So thank you again for watching and supporting me. And thank you everybody once again for watching. I appreciate it. And I hope to see you in the next video.